Welcome back to All the Work, my awesomeification of my 1987 Ski Supreme. I am Joe, a stay-at-home dad who has a ski boat that was sitting around for nine years. And one day my wife looked at me and said, let's get the boat going. So I went for it. And it was a full refurbishment project. I ripped out the driver's side floors. I repaired the stringers. I repaired a giant crack. I did a ton of sanding. I made huge messes. I learned how to fiberglass. I figured out a better way to rip out the foam. I crashed the boat in the foam pouring setup. I poured foam back in the boat. I learned how to gel coat. I painted the rusty brackets. I removed the prop and replaced the strap bearings and then put the engine back in. And now we are in season two, the next summer, when I am getting this thing cleaned up from all this mess and actually ready for the water. Day 97 of the boat build, and I am continuing with the in-dash cooler experiment. Now the day before, I had gotten my plugs built and didn't have any fairing compound, so I was going to try and use a little bit of peanut butter to make a fairing compound, hopefully smooth them out enough that I could just do a little bit of sanding and have a plug smooth enough to be able to pop out the the mold when I was done with it. Now I quickly find out that that's not going to be the case as I'm sanding around this thing. The, the material is just way too hard. I can't sand through it. I can't make it sand enough. Um, I have some solid plugs here. They're pretty close. If I had the time and bought them more materials, the polyester fairing compound, I, these things would be totally usable. Um, and it was pretty evident right away when I started doing this that it, it wasn't going to work. But I wanted to get them cleaned up and at least storable. Um, so I just sanded them down, got all the fiberglass little strands at the edges all cleaned up and smoothed off so that at least I can have them around the house. So, and I'm not terrified that the boys are going to cut their fingers on them. So I just finished that up. And now at this point, the cooler experiment is just that. It's an experiment. It's not going to work. Um, so I'm putting that away. And, you know, I do say, though, that if, if this channel ever starts making money, that I will absolutely cut into the dash of this boat and put a in dash cooler in this thing because I want it. I think it'd be totally awesome, but I, I need to have some money coming in before I do that. Um, so now I'm on to making moves and getting this thing closer to being finished up. Um, I just went around the boat and I took off all the little snaps that are for keeping the boat cover on. Uh, I removed them all out because I'm going to have to paint and everything. Um, and here I am block sanding the gunnel where uh, the tree fell on in the hurricane. Um, just trying to get it smoothed out, trying to get the gunnel matched up so it looks really good uh, for painting later. So I used a, just a two by four with a sheet of, I think, 60 grit sandpaper to get at it. Got it pretty good early, and eventually I'm gonna have to come back and do some more fairing. Not a bad part of the project. Felt kind of good to be finally shaping it and, and doing some work that would last until the end and just had to this is another thing where it takes hours where you just feel it where like this hour and a half of sanding just had to be done and i had to just stand there and focus on it and sand away transitioning to cleaning up the old holes I poured a little acetone in a bucket and I brought a little paintbrush with me and some paper towels and I'm kind of just working around the boat trying to clean up all of the stress cracks that I've ground out there's a bunch of um, dust still inside them so they're kind of tough to get all that out so I'm going to be able to get really good clean fairing into those now I certainly thought that I had missed all this footage and in the, the last update video, or one of the last update videos, I, I took credit for having done this all in the 22 days that I missed on footage. However, here it is right here being done. But that video is already edited and posted, and who cares? I'm just sticking with the theme of making mistakes and moving forward.
now that I've got all the holes cleaned up, I am preparing to do the fairing. That is the total bow, total fair. It's an epoxy based fairing compound. It's the uh, blue and yellow. The mix it together makes it green. This stuff is totally awesome. It works really, really good. And now it is a little chilly. You can see how windy it out it is. Um, so the fairing is a little thick. Um, I definitely mixed up way too much in this first round of fairing and it got hard on me. The working time wasn't as long as I thought it would be. It's about 20 minutes. But 20 minutes is not a lot of time when you're moving and doing these little things. So I think I used like three tablespoons of each for the first round. And then after that, I only do one tablespoon of fairing compound of each uh, to go through and do my fairing. Um, it just seemed to work a lot better that way. After a slight break, probably went and got some water, I come back out and now I'm mixing up the single tablespoon of each, a little bit smaller batch, and I am back at it. Another thing that I should note here is my approach when I was going at this first round was that I wanted to gob it on thick and hopefully get away with just doing one session of fairing and then I could sand and be ready to paint. Um, this was probably a ignorant way to go about it because kind of everything I've seen is you do a couple, sometimes even three rounds of fairing to get something perfect. And I wish I had gone with that approach knowing that I was going to do multiple rounds of fairing the first time because when I gobbed it on, I left myself a lot of sanding to do versus scraping it in thin, knowing that I was going to come around and sand again and then go around and do a little more fairing. I would have saved my t myself some time later. But that, again, um, not knowing what I'm doing, I don't have experience. I'm just watching a bunch of YouTube videos and then going out and trying it for the first time. So, you know, in the future, I certainly would just smear it in nice and thin, come out and sand and plan on two to three rounds of fairing to get something done. But hopefully I'm never doing a whole boat again and two to three rounds of fairing on a small area isn't as intimidating as doing the entire boat all the way around multiple times. What you're watching me do here is drill out the old screw holes with uh, my corded drill, just drilling them out so that when I do fare inside there, I have some good clean surface to bond to. And now I'm chasing those holes back around, cleaning them out with the acetone or the Total Boat cleaning product. I don't know. I can put a link in the show notes, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Again, you're not coming to me for a how-to. You're coming to me to watch some guy actually do a project like this with no experience. That's me. point I have finished putting all the fairing compound in and now I'm putzing around trying to figure out what to do next wishing that this stuff would set up a little bit faster so I could get right to sanding obviously that's not going to happen I do pull the vacuum out and do just a little bit of cleaning um, trying not to touch the fairing compound as best I can um, right now I'm just trying to make some progress while I'm waiting for the fairing compound to set up I think what I'm tackling next is adding just a little bit of uh, boat carpet glue to the the conduit that I had installed under the gunnel right there where the carpet was not wrapping around it all the way. So I just add some glue to the conduit, get the carpet to wrap around so that when you throw stuff in the trash, you won't see the conduit and it'll just look like clean carpet underneath. Just a small detail, something I was able to tackle while I'm waiting for this to finish setting up. And now I'm under the boat. I don't remember exactly what I was doing. I think just a little more cleaning. Pull the dust cover off of the engine so I can get a good look at everything. Just a little bit more cleaning. Um, I think I just had a mess and this is what I could be doing at the time. 
trying to keep it clean as I work. Clean work surface makes good work. I definitely have gotten away from that at times in this project, just trying to hammer away and make progress and get it to happen. I want to be on this boat this summer, and it it's feeling more and more like I'm not going to make it, so I'm always trying to push, and when I start pushing, it um, things inevitably slow down and it goes a little worse, which is kind of annoying. But here I am cleaning up the garage. Uh, Amanda likes to park in the garage, so I need to get that done. Push the boat in. I have pushed this boat back and forth so many times. It is heavy. It is hard, but it is easier than hooking it up to the truck. Clean it up. Go get the kids. Live to boat work another day. Day 98 of the boat restoration, and it is a nasty, rainy day out. Too cold to fare, too cold to do any kind of fiberglassing, so I am tackling a bunch of sanding work that needs to happen. Now, I definitely said in the, the Lost Days video that I did a bunch of this work before I had lost the hard drive. However, what we're seeing now is that I kind of miscalculated which work I lost. So here I am actually trimming down the center panels so that they fit back into the middle of the boat. I need to do this because when I reinstalled the floor and I added all that fiberglass, now that lip is higher than it was before. Now something you didn't see is I added carpet into these rails so that when these panels sit down, they won't squeak and make a lot of noise. I'm able to just smush the panel into that carpet and then feel around where the carpet's being smushed down and that's where I know I need to trim away from the panel. So now I'm back out. And actually, right here, I am drilling the ski pylon hole, which I'm not sure if I marked that on that trip, or maybe I marked it a trip before, but now I cut the center pylon hole, I'm back in the boat, I'm definitely checking it, the panel's back out there, back in the boat, and I am satisfied with the fit of the front panel, so now I am tackling the rear panel. The rear panel is a whole nother challenge compared to the middle one there. Somehow when reinstalling the driver's side floor, I really narrowed up that rear area. I added a lot of fiberglass towards the middle, I guess. So the rear panel there won't sit all the way down, all the way at the back. So I'm having to bevel both sides of it in quite a bit so it'll actually sit down and fit. Um, so I guess I accomplished that. Now I am doing a proper masking job of the boat. Something that I probably should have done a long time ago. However, what I do find is that if you leave the tape on too long, it gets all gooey and nasty. So maybe I did do it at the right time, who knows. But what I'm doing here is just a really thorough masking job of the boat so that I can do all the sanding and hopefully all the way into the painting for the next phase of this thing without messing up any of the good work that I've already done. So I'm just using paper and tape and maybe I should have been using the blue tape here, but I wanted to just get a really good hold, so I'm using the, the white tape. Um, sweep everything up, get it clean, uh, mask it out. Uh, I've masked the engine, and the idea here is that I will just throw my drop cloth over the engine, it'll butt up over the paper each time, and I'll have a really clean work surface to be going at the next phase of this thing with. At some point I tried to remove the dash panel here, however the plastic is all old and weak and it started cracking almost immediately so I just put it back on and at this point I'm masking it. Now that I have the boat outside, it's fully masked, I have the drop cloth over the engine, I am tackling the sanding. Uh, the sanding goes great with this fairing compound, it sands super easy, sands really smooth. I believe at this point I'm using 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, I've got my orbital sander, I've got it hooked up to the vacuum cleaner, it is pretty clean at this time. I'm doing a lot better job this round of being clean with everything I do. Um, sanding over that gunnel spot where I did the big repair, I, I uh, 
sanded that thing out and ground it down to the fiberglass for a big about a two foot section on the sidewall of the boat there and fared it put a ton of fairing into it did a lot of sanding to it and there's a close-up of how big the section is and how much fairing goes into it at this point a uh, storm would come in you can see how wet the driveway is there and i sanded on it right up until the moment that i had to push it in so i pushed it in and it rained the rest of the day now what am i going to do once it's in um when the engine got aligned over the winter, the guy I paid to do it, he obviously didn't do a good job. It, uh, the axle's rubbing on the side of the outboot is just, it's terrible how bad he did. Um, so I am just disconnecting it to see quite how bad the situation is. Pulling it, I was hoping that I could just pull it, realign the engine, and get it done right here. Um, however, that's not going to be totally possible. There I am watching the YouTube video trying to get this figured out so I'm just sitting in the boat again raining out cold can't really do anything so I'm watching the YouTube video the Ron Tannis YouTube video about how to align an engine and there's my feeler gauge getting ready to go um, now the big issue is when we reinstalled the engine over at Doug's house last summer the engine and I remember it happening pulled hard to the left um, got shoved way to one side and it's way over there. So now I got my pry bar and I'm just trying to jack the thing all back over to the right, get it in the middle. Um, it's not budging. Yeah, at some point I pull out the penetrating oil and get at it. And I, um, I worked hard on this thing. It got hot. I had to take my shirt off. Really just pulling hard on the thing. Right here I'm putting cardboard down underneath it so that when I put the penetrating oil in, it'll drip down to the cardboard and not make a mess of the bottom of the boat. And I just got at it, tap, tap, tap with a hammer, trying to make it move. Uh, long story short, in this session, it did not move. It took about three days of penetrating oil to get this thing to budge at all. And that's not happening right now. And um, I think at this point, I have hit it with WD-40, maybe not the real penetrating stuff. And now I am tackling the rudder. The rudder is a whole nother issue. Uh, when I picked it up from the guy who aligned the engine improperly, uh, he told me that I wasn't going to be able to put the propeller back on the boat because the rudder was going to be in the way and I was going to have to drop the rudder out to get the um, propeller back on the axle. Now, I would, at which time I was like, why didn't you just call me and I could have driven the propeller down, but I didn't think of that at the time. So another just like, the guy was just terrible. And it just bums me out even talking about it right now. So here I am trying to get the rudder out. Um, the rudder was all seized in there. It was a pain. I, I kind of got it to move. And then as soon as I got it to move, then I go up and grab the propeller and find out that I can get the propeller onto the axle with the rudder in place. And so I just have to pop the rudder back up in the way it should be. And this was just a waste of, I don't know, like an hour. And at that point, I figured it out. Now I'm in trying to move the engine again, but I just wasted an hour messing with the rudder, and hopefully I didn't do any damage to it. So really annoyed about all this, really um, not satisfied with the work I got in this day, and uh, just kind of bummed about that whole piece. But it is what it is. The last thing I did on this day was grab my out of battery electrical system and lay down up in the nose of the boat and mock it up in there. Try and figure out where it's going to fit, how I'm going to install it, how it's all going to work. And just do that for a little bit until it's time to go pick up the boys and do boat work tomorrow.